Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor in yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today I have a real treat for you guys. I have your eight most asked questions answered by the head of training of Atlantic Flight Training Academy in Cork. You have the time codes to the individual questions here in the description, but I highly recommend that you look through the entire video because I think there's quite a lot in there that you haven't thought about. Stay tuned. Wind 310 at 16, right, right. Delta 260. Okay, so I am here together with AFTA's head of training, Mark Casey. You're very welcome. Thank you very much for uh, letting me come here. Um, so I am going to ask a few questions, yep, primarily sure. questions that have come in from my uh, my social media channels. From, yes. From, um, uh, my users yeah. w- were wondering about this wonderful world of flight training right. and why it looks the way it does. Yeah. Yeah. So um, obviously the first thing that, that people will want to be interested in is how, how should they be prepared when they, when they come for flight training? What kind of, uh, like, if we think about schooling, for example, is there an academic yeah. requirements? Yeah. Um, there's recommendations under EASA, you know, that, um, that, that when we're doing an assessment, uh, that we should look at an, an, an individual's academic achievements. Mm. Um, we work very much on the basis that it's a very level playing field when you when you apply to the academy, and we put you through um, an assessment that we've uh, developed and um, fine tuned over the last uh, twenty four years. Okay. Um, it's 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 tricky. It's difficult. Yeah. Um, and we, we kind of advise people on how to prepare for it. But uh, we would expect a, a reasonable um, standard of uh, basic mathematics, uh, good English comprehension, and um, you know any of the uh, STEM subjects are an advantage uh, to applicants for sure. Okay. Yeah. Now, we, you mentioned the, 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 the famous word uh, assessment here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is something that I know a lot of people yeah. are worried about. Yeah, so, sure. so when it comes to assessment, what, yeah. what, can, what can the applicants expect when yeah. they come for the assessment day? Um, with the mentored schemes, um, obviously dealing with a um, you know, large airline like, uh, like um, Briner, um, they've set the bar quite high. Um, they want the best of the best um, for their kind of pan-European operation. And um, yes, you can prepare. Um, we would expect people to have a good knowledge of um, uh, of Reiner, um, what their operation is, what their um, what their growth statistics are, um, how they've grown to be uh, the largest European airline over the last. Uh, 34 years, um, what their uh, fleet expansion plans are, and what their uh, company structure and uh, aspirations are. Okay. Um, we would expect individuals to have a good understanding of how an airplane flies, you know, from a small Cessna uh, to uh, a big uh, 737 800 or 737 Max. And, uh, and this is even from yeah. people who haven't got any flight experience from before? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, you're, you're expecting them to be fairly versed in, yeah. in these kind of things. Yeah. What one would, we would as as a, when we're doing um, uh, the panel interview at the uh, conclusion of the assessment day, mm. um, panel interviewers would expect to see uh, passion and enthusiasm um, from the applicants. Um, we're not really looking for people that are just taking this as a it's a career um, a career option that might be a nice idea. All right, we want right. them to have an understanding of what the job's about. Okay. Um, you know, the pros and the cons of it. You know, uh, the uh, it's more of a vocation, to be quite honest, Good. than uh, than the, the, you know just a, a job that looks nice from the outside. Yeah, and you this know, is something yeah. that yeah. these guys, if you, you've been following the yeah. channel, you know that I've been talking a lot about this, that you yeah. have to, you, you can't go into this occupation with some kind of fairy tale dream of Correct. what it is. Yeah. You have to have some kind of realistic expectations of what it is to be an airline pilot. Correct. Both the, the many, many, many good things that comes with it, but yeah. also there are some downsides and what are those downsides? Yeah. So yeah. you would expect them to have a little bit of knowledge of that before we would. they come. We would, and we'd always advise them to maybe talk to somebody in the industry you know, before um, they come for assessment and have an understanding. Um, 
they can do a flight, uh, maybe with their local flight school, um, before they come for uh, an assessment to get on a program like this. So they have a good idea of what flying an airplane is like and okay. being in that environment. You know, and is it an environment they're comfortable in? Is it an environment they can see themselves, you know, developing a career in? Good. Yeah. Psychometric testing, yeah. computer-based testing, things yeah. like that. Yeah. There's a bit um, of that. We, we would advise people to be aware of um, what that is. Mm. You know, not to turn up for an assessment um, having never s seen a psychometric test or having never sampled a verbal reasoning um, passage, yeah. you know, where you're to extract um, reason from uh, from a paragraph. Yeah. Now, yeah. This, this, this is something that I've also yeah. been talking quite a lot about on the channel is that it's not we're not, on, I certainly am not telling people to go out and practice for these exams, but what I am telling people is go and do one in order to, to feel more comfortable with it. Yeah, to exactly. Comfortable with yeah. the format, so Correct. it doesn't come as a huge surprise when it's yeah. time for the assessment yeah. day. And to be fair to um, the, uh, the assessments uh, that we give, there are very thorough, detailed examples um, at, before you actually do the real life one, you oh, know, okay. where you are being assessed. So you have time to practice. But we would advise people still, as you said, you know, to have an understanding hmm. of the format of it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Now, the biggest, the single biggest question that I've gotten, and we're yeah. talking tens of not hundreds of these questions, I know. is what about the money? What yeah. about the funding? Yeah. Why? How much does, does a, um, an integrated training cost with AFTA? The mentored uh, scheme costs 83,000 uh, with AFTA for the Reiner mentored scheme. Okay. Um, 83,000 euros. Yes, yeah, 83,000 euros. Uh, that includes everything, uniform, all your exam fees, um, license fees. Um, there are no extras. You get a, uh, an iPad when you join. All, all the kind of hidden costs are within that price. Mm. Uh, that's important. Um, that can actually count for about ten thousand. If you, with some schools, you know they might give a very competitive price, but they haven't included, you know, exam fees, iPads, uniforms, and stuff like that. So, no. um, it's a fully inclusive price. Um, that's for the Reiner Mentored Scheme. Okay. It's sixteen months uh, duration, and um, you know. We were discussing earlier about how how do people fund this? Yeah, that, yeah. that's, that's going to yeah. be my next question. Yeah. I mean, eighty-three yeah. thousand is still a, it's a lot of load money. of money. It is a lot of money. Yeah, um, I suppose the, the 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 general profile of um, of individ individuals joining after is uh, not rich kids, to be quite honest. Mm. It's um, people that have probably done their leaving cert or their A levels, our equivalent. Um, They've maybe worked for a year, saved up maybe 10, 15,000. Uh, they apply to AFTA for a mentored scheme or for the integrated scheme, um, and they're successful. Uh, Mum and dad are maybe going to help them a little bit, and uh, they go to um, a finance provider. And because they have a little bit of equity behind them, um, and they've proven that they're competent, or they've reached a competence level to uh, be accepted onto a mentored scheme. Uh, they, they, the finance uh, provider will, um, will will back them for a certain proportion of it. So generally, not a hundred percent. No. Generally, fifty or sixty percent. That's what we're finding. But but there are finance providers out there yeah. who are a bit with, with maybe the equity or the the, the secure um, the mom and dad's. Yeah something in the background in order to secure the yeah, one up. Yeah, it, they're, they're, that seems to be the general profile of, yeah. of, of most of our cadets. Now, this yeah. is because this is something yeah. that I personally uh, is yeah. very passionate about. Yeah. I, I, I want to work against trying to find better yeah. financing solutions, a way yeah. for people that are really talented, that could become great pilots, but just does not have the, 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 the financial backing that is required. And I know that you guys are working. We are. We're working um, closely with a number of finance providers. And we're, we're not a million miles away from, from a, a final solution. And we're talking to the industry as well, who mm. are very supportive of a, a solution 
that will attract those kind of people and they're the kind of people that the industry wants. Yeah. yeah. yeah because it makes sense that once you have, if you've gone through a proper assessment in the beginning, Correct. You, you, are, you have essentially shown yeah. that you have what it takes to enter the industry. Yes. So that should, yeah. that should yeah. lower the risk for the finance provider yes. quite a bit. It will, it yes. will for sure. Good. What about we're seeing that already. Yeah. where you know um, people that are being accepted on the mentored schemes. We have two schemes. We have a Reiner mentored scheme and we have a Stobart Air uh, mentored scheme. And people that are going to their finance providers having been accepted, it's quite tough to get on these schemes. You have to, you have to work hard mm. uh, and achieve a high entry standard to get on these schemes. And the people that get on them are being successful. Uh, being more successful at uh, securing finance. Okay, that's yeah. great. Yeah. What about, because what, one thing that springs to mind immediately when you hear about um, um, financing, standing here for my yeah. 16 months or so, what about living, living costs? What about finding places? Because we're in Cork right yeah. now. Yeah. So, I, you know, do you, do you have uh, on-site living um, accommodation? Yes, we have, um, uh, contracts with the uh, local university accommodation providers mm. um, they charge set fees you can see they're on on their website some are higher some are lower depending on the quality of the accommodation and the proximity to the university primarily mm. but there's one particular one which is quite close to AFTA it's a seven or eight minute uh, drive from AFTA and we have a shuttle service between that uh, accommodation provider mm. and that works out at just over 500 euros per month all bills included and it's nice ensuite accommodation um, high-speed Wi-Fi, uh, common living area and kitchen, and the students like it. Good, you know. but that's outside of the 83,000 of the, yeah. the actual yeah. course. Right. You need to budget for that. So you need to yeah. budget for that, and you that do. is important yeah. for you yeah. to remember, guys, that if you, when you do look at this, you have to look at the, the everything, the whole package. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it the possibility to come to AFTA if you are, let's say, you're not from Ireland or from the UK? Yeah. Do you take students from all over the world? Or? Actually, about 35% um, of our students are non Ireland and the UK. Mostly yeah. European Union yeah. though? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Good. Primarily. Or converting maybe from a foreign license. Yeah, but that's interesting so yeah. as well. Yeah, we have a lot of modular students coming from maybe South Africa, South America, uh, converting their licenses. Um, so you could, let's say that you're in the United States yeah. and you want to go over and you want to convert your licenses, sure. you could go and contact AFTA to, to get, I guess you need a tailored program in order to Yeah, we'd look at the, the individual's experience depending on what they've been doing to date. If it's just a basic qualification, um, it'll be one set of criteria. But somebody maybe have somebody may have been instructing in the U in the US, or may have been flying commercially. Yeah. You know, so we'll advise them. Um, you know, the most cost-effective, efficient route to converting their license. It should be mentioned at this point as well, guys, that if you yeah. are in the US or if you are outside of the European Union, most of the employers like Stobart, like yeah. Ryanair, like yeah. EasyJet, yeah. they will require you to have a uh, unrestricted right to live Correct. and work within yeah. the European and Union. And we will advise people that before they spend any money converting their license, that it's probably a waste of time because you won't be uh, eligible for employment unless you have an unrestricted exactly. right to work in uh, in Europe. Yeah. And I do get a lot of questions about yeah. this, guys. Now, what I what you, if you're not, if you don't have the right to unrestricted right to live and work in the European Union, you need to go and speak to your embassy in your country to see if it's possible to attain that right. Okay, um, there are different in different countries, so there's no way for us to to tell uh, one kind of one set yeah. solution for all that. You need to check with your embassy. Yeah. Um, good. Now, um, what about age? This yeah. is probably the third yeah. most common question. Yes. Like can, yeah. you, can you start your training when you're yeah. 35, when you're 40? We had a, a cadet recently who started his training at 46, and um, he's managed to secure a position with a small airline in the, in the UK. Mm. Um, is, it, is it harder um, if you're older? For sure. I, I mean, you're... Your learning ability um, reduces with age, but we do see a lot of people, um, especially kind of, you know, 35 to 40, mm. um, making the career change and being very successful with um, uh, securing. So there's uh, no employment. age limit on actually starting. No. Not the integrated program. No, 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 none of your programs. No. All right. But we will be very um, honest and forthright with people. Mm. Um, when they come to us to meet us for the first time and we'll point them in the direction of what career 
path might suit their lifestyle. Yeah. You know, older people, um, you know, in their 40s often will have a, a, a family mm. and it mightn't suit them to be moving from base to base or if one base closed, they'd be moved to another base. So it might suit them for to have a more stable um, uh, career path with an airline that's based maybe in the region that they're settled in and maybe travel may not suit them. No. So we, we kind of try and explain to people what the lifestyle is like with each particular employer um, before they take that leap of faith into the airline industry. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and this yeah. is what I've been saying yeah. for ages, that you need to be able to be flexible and realize what it is that you're getting yourself yeah. into. Once yeah. again, yeah. That, that is, you know, if you go into a panel interview, you will be expected to know a little bit about yeah, this exactly. to understand exactly, these yeah. kind of things. Yeah, and especially yeah. if you're in your 40s, you would have the life experience behind correct, you to correct. kind of build on. We, we have um, airlines coming to us that, that actually prefer people that are a little bit older mm. and more settled, that aren't going to leave them. Yeah. Especially the smaller airlines that maybe don't operate, you know, large fleets of modern jets. Yeah. You know, they, they're more interested in people that are going to join, go on a career path with that particular airline. They're older. The airline's based in their locality, they're not going to leave. Yeah. And that's what that airline wants, the stability of that individual. Mm. Whereas, you know, the younger 20-year-old pilot will join an airline, will have a fantastic career path, but may decide at 26, I want to go to a long-haul airline, you know, yes. or a legacy carrier. You it's know. the na yeah. nature of things. It, really. it does happen. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> another yeah. question, and this is not a common question, but this is a question that I'm, yeah. I'm personally very curious about. Yeah. Um, we're in Cork, yeah. right? Cork is not known for its beach weather. Yeah. Um, so this, you know, this we're close to the Atlantic coastline. Yeah. It means that yeah. there's going to be a lot of low pressures crossing by here. Yeah, it's challenging for it, sure. Yeah. So yeah. how do you, as a train, yeah. first of all, will that affect the length of training, generally speaking? Like, will no, it take more time? We we have a fantastic um, record with regard to finishing people um, on time. Uh, it's a 16 month program. Uh, providing the cadet meets the competency markers throughout the training, they will get through in 16 months. Um, that is um, actually our average uh, completion time is 16 months. So okay. we're, we're hitting that marker all the time. Um, is the weather tricky? For sure it is. How do we get around that? Um, we operate seven days a week. We operate from seven in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. Uh, I guess if we were in Florida, we could be choosy and open it, open the doors at nine o'clock and close at five o'clock, uh, and take the weekends off. Um, but we can't because you're right. We operate in a challenging environment. Um, personally, as a line training captain like yourself, um, I love to see uh, cadets turning up that were trained in maybe the UK, Ireland, or Scandinavia, mm. because. Um, Generally, their handling is pretty good. You know, uh, they've they've been used to high winds. They've been used to challenging conditions. Yeah. And as my father always said, there's no point in learning to sail a boat on a lake. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. You might as well learn to fly an airplane in the environment you're going to be working in. Yeah. And flying uh, a big airliner on a crystal clear day with no wind is is nice, and it's not that challenging. No. But as you know, the next day is going to be different. Or the start of your day could be like that, and then you're flying up to, to Dublin from Tenerife, and it's gusting 40 knots across the runway in Dublin. Yeah, and, no, no. and believe and me, that does happen, guys. Yeah, it's it's yeah. not that uncommon, even. And then you go back to Tenerife, and it's nice and sunny, and there's no wind again. You know? So the amount of distance you, ca you cover, you know, flying around at uh, 600 miles an hour, is phenomenal. Yeah. you know, in, in a day as an airline pilot. And you have to be able to adapt to challenging conditions. Oh, yeah. Training in challenging conditions also has its advantages. And that's the point I'm making. You know. Yes, and yeah. that's that's yeah. what I wanted. Basically yeah. what I wanted to know is if yeah. it would delay the training, because yeah. that, that might be something to consider. However, yeah. if it's not delaying the training, no, I, I, I actually agree yeah. Yeah. that the more exposure you get to things like yeah. thinking about icing conditions, for sure, high winds, yeah. low level um, yeah. cloud layers, actual IFR yeah. training rather than using the, the HUD, yeah. makes, makes all the difference when the it comes to back into the cockpit. The of majority like of our IFR training uh, is done in actual conditions. Yeah, you will always see actual in most flights. Because <laughs> okay. as you said, you know it's a very changeable climate here. 
um, you'll see a lot of icing from September till March. You know, there's quite, you'll see quite a lot of icing and you'll be making those kind of command decisions about, about what your actions will be when you encounter those situations. And that's all um, brilliant for developing um, an individual's capability uh, as a commercial airline pilot. Yes. And, and we let situations uh, develop you know, for the cadets as well to see how they cope with it. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, one final question. Yeah. Um, in a lot of training organizations, yeah. you, you, you start off by doing your ATPL exams, the 14 exams, yeah. the, 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 the quite heavy, um, the heavy, heavy lifting, the heavy lifting yeah. theoretical yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I have understand, I've understood that you do it slightly differently. Can yeah, you tell me a little bit about that? We're very much against that. Um, I, I can see the merits in doing that, uh, that you want to see that somebody can achieve the uh, academic marker uh, which is quite high, high of the 14 uh, ATPL exams, uh, EAS ATPL exams, which are, which are quite difficult. Mm. Um, we have found over the last uh, almost 25 years now that doing a pure integrated course uh, gives the cadet a much better foundation to go into the ATPL learning environment. So we generally have the cadet up They've gone solo for sure, and they'll have maybe somewhere between 30 and 40 hours before they hit the classroom for six months. So you actually they know how an air they've stalled an airplane. You know they've they've seen all the forces. They've probably done a little bit of upset recovery training. You know they've they've seen how an airplane flies. They're very familiar with all the instrumentation in the airplane before you start talking about it in the classroom. So and they can then relate it um, to the actual aircraft. So you actually start with what would be the equivalent of the PPL stage, yeah, and sure. then yeah. you go into the theoretical yes. exams. Yeah. So in other words, they have been done. They have done the equivalent of the PPL stage yeah. before they start going into the, the heavy lifting ATPL yeah. exams. I suppose our philosophy, Peter, is uh, I think Benjamin Franklin Franklin famously said, "Ooh, Franklin." Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, tell me, and I'll forget. Um, show me and I'll learn and involve me and I'll remember mm. and that is the philosophy of AFTA to okay. be quite honest you know so uh, you and you know that from ty doing type ratings and teaching yeah. type ratings yourself once they touch the switch and they can relate to maybe you know what a hydraulic pump is you, mm. you'll remember and you'll see it activated and you'll see it whereas you read about it yeah you'll get it for sure in theory yeah but in practice I think when you involve the practical and the theory, it, it, oh, it, it yeah. makes it makes it, a ton of, of, of sense to me because yeah. if you like looking at a, a subject like meteorology, yeah. if you've been out flying in it and Correct. you're seeing convective That's activity, exactly you're it. seeing yeah. a cumulonimbus cloud yeah. up close, you'll never forget. No, yeah. and you will yeah. understand it when it comes yeah. to actually reading about it. So that yeah. makes sense to yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that you would like yeah. to say at this point. Anything yeah. that you um, that you like to highlight? No, I suppose we. As, as a company, we, we, we have a lot of students, you know, we have over 200 students, but we look at everyone as an individual. Mm. Um, we're not an enormous school, we're still a small, relatively small school, you know, we have students at different phases and different stages. Uh, we've taken a unique approach to the management of that amount of students, where we have a course manager, which will be uh, one of your flight instructors and each course manager will have a maximum of 20 students um, under their care and the students can go directly to the course manager then or the parent of the student or the guardian uh, with any issue mm. um, a bit like Reiner have done with their base captains you know around their almost 90 bases Heard of it, uh, yeah. the, ba the base captain is the go-to individual um, with your issue and then the base captain will escalate it up the line uh, into the management structure to resolve the issue and that's worked brilliantly and uh, we've used um, Reiner's example in that you know to uh, to spread the load um, mm. from the from the management team and after and identify problems early yeah. rather than letting problems fester where it may be a personal issue at home where a cadet needs time off um, it could be a, a learning uh, issue during one of the phases, I mean, uh, every single pilot, including, you know, qualified, experienced pilots, will have some issue at some stage 
um, yeah. in, in their training. Yeah. And uh, we're blatantly aware of that and we, we facilitate, you know, removing the roadblocks to, to, to steady progression. Okay. Yeah. One final question. Yeah. So, um, you have gone to, this is something that I've always said is important, uh, yeah. the, the cadets that have come in, they've applied for, for example, the mentored um, yeah. scheme, yeah. Uh, they've done the assessments yeah. there, um, you've, you've taken them in, are they guaranteed a job after that or is it still steps <coughs> to go? Well, AFTA's involvement is, is one, one part of the process. Uh, when a cadet um, is successful with regard to the initial um, HR and um, uh, entry assessment, they'll be um, put forward to Ryanair for acceptance. Okay. So Ryanair will then screen the applicant's performance throughout uh, the process and we wait for Ryanair to give us the green light um, whether that individual can start. Mm. Um, uh, when we get the green light, we give them a start date. Okay, right, so. and then when, when it yeah. comes time after their training to actually yeah. join up with, with Ryanair in this case, yeah. uh, do they need to go through further testing then? What they have at the end is um, a, an evaluation. That there's, it's competency-based training uh, throughout the program. Mm. Uh, the Ryanair training department will be given a monthly update on the student's progress so that any issues with the student are highlighted early. At the end of the training, um, it's a 99% guarantee of uh, a job as a first officer with the airline, mm. uh, be it Stobart or Reiner, um, but you'll have to do an evaluation at the end okay. to prove that you're competent. Yeah. You know? um, the HR um, element at the end is a meeting with HR. You've already done a HR evaluation at the start to say that you're the kind of individual that the airline wants and there'll be a final meeting with HR at the end to ask you, were you happy with the program? Are you still happy to join the company? You know, um, is there any issues that you'd like to discuss? So, I mean, to be fair um, to the mentored schemes that, that we have, uh, the airlines have taken um, the attitude uh, that they wrap their arms around the cadets and that they want these people for the long term in the airline. And we have been, um, told and directed by the airlines to recruit future captains um, for those organizations yeah. and that's what we're doing. Good, yeah. good. So and just for the record guide, HR is not a person, it's human resources. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's it, that yeah. wasn't clear. Yeah. Right, Mark, yeah. thank you very much for yeah. your time. Welcome. It's been a pleasure. Welcome. Now yeah. guys, if you have more questions about this, and I'm guessing that you do, yeah. then please send them in into the, um, uh, the comments below in the video. And uh, you know, if there's enough questions on one particular subject, then we might do a follow-up interview where we, we'd be sort these things out because I really, really want this to become a resource for you. If you have questions about you know, future training to become an airline pilot, what to expect, well then I will try to find that answer too.